Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo and this is part five of the ultimate smart home guide for 2020. So far in this guide, we have discussed what is a smart home, what are the benefits of a smart home, what kind of smart home devices are there, and how do we control these devices. If you haven't seen those videos yet, there are links in the description below, or you can go to techtechmoretech.com. If you have seen the videos and you like them or they're helpful to you, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button to help that YouTube algorithm. At the end of the last video, we touched on automations, which are essentially a way for your smart home devices to control themselves within a certain set of parameters that you've set up. In this section, we're gonna go over the different automations there are, and I'm gonna go over the automations that I use in my home to give you an idea of what a smart home could look like. To start things off, a simple automation can be broken down into two parts. You have a trigger and an action. The trigger will be a set of conditions that start the automation. The action will then be what a device does when these certain conditions are met. An easy example to wrap your mind around this is a simple time-based automation. At 8 a.m. each morning, your lights turn on. The time of day is the trigger, 8 a.m., and your lights turning on is the action. This is what I would consider a simple automation because it only has one trigger and one action. Automations can then be expanded to be as complex and specific as you want them to be. The key difference with these sort of complex automations is that there are conditions between the trigger and the action. To go off that last example, let's say you don't want your lights to turn on on the weekends. So now your automation is gonna be your lights are gonna turn on at 8 a.m., but only on weekdays. Your trigger is still that 8 a.m. time, but your condition is it's only Monday through Friday, and the action is still the lights turning on. I wanna set your expectations now that when first starting a smart home, it's gonna take a lot of trial and error to figure out what exact conditions and what set of automations work for you and your household. Another convenient example of a more sort of complex automation is your lights turning on when you come home, but only when it's a certain level of brightness. So you can use the GPS in your phone for the location-based part of the trigger, and the conditions you can use a motion sensor luminance levels to figure out exactly how dark it is. Because sometimes you might come home and it's very bright out, you don't need the lights off, but sometimes you'll come home and it's a very cloudy day and you want the lights on. Some companies are starting to offer learning devices, which will learn your habits and anticipate those actions. However, these are few and far between, and for the time being, you're gonna have to set up these automations on your own. I've mentioned before many times that I believe that automations are what really makes a smart home smart. Without the automations, you have a connected home, which is a big step forward in terms of convenience, but automations take it to the next level. Instead of going through different apps and showing you what kind of automations they offer, I'm gonna go over the automations I have set up in my home to give you an idea of what you can accomplish fairly easily. This is by no means a definitive list of automations. There are tons more out there and I will touch on some of those later in the video. But for now, these are just the ones that I have decided to add the most convenience to my life and my everyday routines. I'd like to note that this is before the state home order in Illinois when I actually had to go to work and had a daily routine. Now I just stay home all day, so these are kind of not as applicable right now. Starting in the morning, my alarm app sleep cycle ties into my Hue lights. I have a Hue Go light on my bedside table. So when the alarm goes off, that light turns on. Because most of the lights in my home are controlled by smart switches, they don't integrate with Hue. So instead, I have an automation set. So when my bedside light turns on between the hours of 5.30 and 6, then my kitchen and my hallway lights will turn on as well. My main closet is a walk-in closet that has a motion sensor inside. So no matter the time of day, when I walk in and it detects that I've walked in, it'll turn the light on. It will then look for no motion detected for one minute and then it'll turn the lights off. Now because I get up much earlier than my wife does, I want to make sure that that light on my bedside table turns off as soon as possible. I have motion sensors in the hallway that whenever they detect motion turn on a path light that I have in the middle of the hallway. But between 5.30 and 6, if those motion sensors detect motion, they will then turn off the light in my bedroom. This indicates that I've gone out of bed, I've gone dressed, and I'm going towards the kitchen, and I don't need to be in the bedroom any longer so the light can turn off. My morning routine is really quick because I don't eat breakfast, I just pack my lunch and pretty much head to work. 
It is very common, however, for people to have a morning routine with their Google Homes or their Alexa devices that kind of go over their different um, agendas for the day, the weather, any sort of news they have, maybe they play some music. So that's an automation that you can set up if you spend more time in your kitchen in the morning, for example. As I then leave for work, the location of my phone will then trigger the automation to turn off all the lights in the house and lock the doors as well. When I come home from work, my lights will turn on if I come home within an hour and a half of sunset. I found through trial and error that this is kind of the sweet spot for how dark it's gonna be when I get home in order for my lights to be effective. Now, of course, I could add a motion sensor into my living room that has luminance levels and make an automation based on that. However, at this point, I don't feel like fixing something that isn't broken. In the evenings, my bedroom and bathroom lights will automatically turn on around 9.45 or so, and my living room and kitchen lights are gonna dim, kind of signaling that it's time to get ready for bed. In the bathroom, I have a humidity sensor, which then ties into a smart switch that controls the fan in my bathroom. So after a shower, the humidity sensor will then detect what the humidity level is and keep that fan on until it reaches a desirable level so I don't get any mold. Once I'm in bed and I've set my alarm, that alarm turns off my hue lights, which then by automation turns off everything else. So all my lights, switches, TVs, that turns off and my locks lock. With the exception of course being the fan in the bathroom, which will go on until it reaches that humidity level and then it turns off. Now these are all very simple automations that anyone can set up. However, it did take a lot of trial and error to get them to work perfectly within kind of what I want them to do. The majority of these automations only work on weekdays because I don't go to the office on weekends. So my schedule is sort of all over the place on weekends. And really, I just care about my lights turning on when I come home or off when I leave my home. And again, this is not a definitive list. There are tons more automations that we'll get to in just a moment. But these are the ones that I think an average person in their home can set up and add a lot of convenience to their life. Other cool automations is, for example, to be notified when your laundry is done. You can do this either by putting vibration sensors on the side of your laundry machines, or you can plug them into a smart plug that measures load and it will alert you whenever the load is back down to zero. You can also get water leak sensors and place them strategically around your home so that you're notified if there's a leak. If you have a family, you can consider setting up automations that will notify you whenever your kids come home or leave home. You can also set up lots of different automations geared towards security. So if your cameras detect something, they'll notify you. Uh, you can put vibration sensors on windows. So if a window breaks, it'll notify you as well. This should hopefully give you an idea of what kind of automations you can set up in your home pretty easily and what you can kind of tailor towards your specific lifestyle. Now setting up these automations can be done in a couple different ways, but the main way that I would recommend is using a sort of unified smart home app on your phone. There is no one single app that is the absolute best because it'll also depend on which ecosystem you're gonna be primarily using. Alexa and HomeKit tend to have the most options for consumers, but there are also other applications like If This Then That, You Know Me, Home Plus, and others that offer good automation um, options. I've personally not found a single app that checks all of the boxes. A lot of the time they will have some features that others won't and others will have some features that that one doesn't. So if you want a full sort of comprehensive amount of automations, you might have to have automation set up in maybe one or two different applications. I hope that as smart homes become more and more popular and mainstream, that sort of functionality will become mainstream across the board. Now, for those of you that are very DIY and very tech savvy, you can also go down the option of Home Assistant and Node Red. These are by far the most powerful home automation tools, but they require a lot of work up front. They have a decently steep learning curve and they're not really designed for sort of average consumers, which is why I didn't want to talk about them too much, but I didn't want to let everyone know that the option does exist. And to be clear, there is still plenty to be desired from smart home automations, particularly in the functionality and simplicity. The Nest thermostat was among the first smart home mainstream devices out there and it was touted as the learning thermostat. As smart homes become more and more popular and the big companies start creating their own smart home products, I just hope that they can then leverage their massive AI infrastructure towards a smart home to make it even smarter. For the time being, it will require a little bit of upfront work on your end to make sure that your automations kind of fit exactly your lifestyle. 
Well, once you get them up and running, they'll pretty much work indefinitely and it will ensure that you have the smartest home on the block. In the next part of the guide, we're gonna go over smart home connection protocols. This is definitely more of the technical side of things, but I think it's good to know just that going forward when you're buying different devices, you're not confused by the different labels on them. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. My question for you guys is what automations do you use? Are there any that you just cannot live without? Please share with the community. This guide will be released on a Monday, Thursday schedule. So if you wanna make sure you don't miss out, hit that like and subscribe button so that you can always stay up to date. And until next time, See ya.